Hi, today's video is going to be standing up. I tried to return to my old original gym routine that I had prior to tearing my quadricep and yeah, not, not time yet. Uh, so when I sit down and get back up, it is incredibly uncomfortable. So I've decided to stand until further notice or until I'm too tired to stand and must go to sleep. And when that happens, I will roll myself out of bed, crawl downstairs and make my way to work tomorrow, whichever way I need to. So today I wanted to expound a little bit on OW, expound, this is gonna suck, expound a bit on the video that I did on politics a few months ago. The point of that video, the, the core driving idea in that video is that I noticed a lot of people when discussing politics or issues that are of importance to them, they discuss them by insulting the other person and, or by saying anybody who thinks X is an idiot. And the problem with that, and it's something that I've been guilty of at times, and I admit it, and I try to better myself. The problem is that when we do that, we get into this lizard brain mode where we don't care about intelligent discourse. We don't care about issues. We don't care about learning. We don't care about exchanging. We just go into this lizard mode of defend by attacking the other person or defend by retreating and not talking to that person and how I think that if you're going to discuss issues, that's fine. But just do so without insulting, without condescending, without um, having a passive-aggressive attitude, without having a holier-than-thou attitude, because none of that is going to get your idea across. It's never going to work. Now, to expand on that a little bit, I'd like to talk about something that seems to have been just going nuts ever since right after the election and Thanksgiving of this year. You're, there are entire articles and there are entire websites dedicated to people who are not going home for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner because they are afraid of having conversations with their family. They're afraid of yelling at or, or, cast, or being cast out by their family. And this is absolutely ridiculous. And the same thing is, is going on with people who are just friends. So I'd like to discuss a little bit more of what I define a, a, a quality relationship to be. To me, a quality relationship is a relationship based on respect. Whether it's a friend, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a family member, whatever it is, quality relationships are based on respect. And the, one of the foundations of a respectful relationship is the ability to disagree without denigrating the other person. Now, if you are afraid that if you talk about something that matters to you, that your friend or your family member will cast you out and not wish to speak to you anymore, that they will no longer be your friend, then that is a relationship based on fear. You cannot have a relationship that is based on respect and fear at the same time. It doesn't work. It's this weird form of double think and it's just going to cause a lot of problems. You can either have a relationship based on how, based, well, hopefully not based on torn legs, but you can have a relationship based on respect or a relationship based on fear. It cannot be ba based on both. Now, if you try to discuss something that matters to you and you're afraid that somebody else will not want to be your friend, I'm here to suggest that you not be afraid to discuss it. Because if you figure out by discussing something that somebody is going to cast you away, that your best friend will never want to talk to you again, then guess what? You've just figured out that you never mattered to them. And wouldn't it be better to figure out that you didn't matter to the person that you thought was your best friend, the person that you trusted to be there for you when you're sad or when you're out of luck or when your business fails or when you get kicked out of your apartment or when you get divorced? Wouldn't you like to know that you don't matter to that person right now rather than waiting five or 10 years to when you actually need them to realize that your circle of friends is not a circle of friends at all. I would suggest that you figure out as quickly as you can what people you have a respect-based relationship with. I disagree with Jessa every day. We argue five times a day, it's like a sport. Um, I remember going on a date with this woman eight months ago when we were talking about the, the right to repair. She thought that it was a bunch of communist bullshit that I could even say, this company should have to sell parts to us or this company should have to tell us where a fuse is. But we were able to discuss this before dinner for a half hour. And we moved on to other issues, but we were able to respectfully disagree and go back and forth. See that respectfully disagree, not fuck you, not you're an asshole, not you're stupid, not anybody who's not an idiot would recognize X. Respectfully disagree. I give my argument, you give your argument. I learn something. I give my argument, you learn something. We may still disagree, but that's, uh, dis that's a respectful relationship. Another respectful relationship that comes to mind was one of my dad's friends. 
He was telling me the story of one of his best friends who's married to somebody who voted for Hillary Clinton. My dad's friend voted for Trump. Now, my dad's friend's wife said, I voted for Hillary, I'm sorry. He screamed, he said, how dare you apologize for who you voted for? You should never have to apologize for who you voted for in this country. That's the point. You should be able to vote for who you vote for. I vote for who I vote for. Why are you apologizing for voting for Hillary Clinton? And that, it just, that's the, that's the point of a respectful relationship. The, the fact that she was afraid to say something, the fact that there are so many people out there that are afraid to speak their mind and have legitimate conversations only speaks volumes to the low quality of the relationships that they have in their lives. I had dinner the other night about uh, a week ago at some meetup and there was somebody who came to the table who was just talking about things and their view in the world, and they were a Marxist. They were a genuine communist. I don't mean like a lef one of those things where it's a really left-wing person and somebody tells a joke and goes, you're a communist. I mean an actual, honest-to-God, believes fully in all of this communist, full-on mar full Marxist communist, the antithesis of everything that I stand for in the world. And we were able to have a discussion for about an hour and a half and it's funny because there were people at the table that disagreed with him that I could not have a conversation with because their disagreement was rooted in, you said X, that's all I need to know, or you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. I can't have those types of discussions because even though it's with somebody who may agree with me, they're not based on respect. It's not a real relationship. We had a discussion for almost two hours. I mean, think that like the, the restaurant closed. They had to kick us out because we were so busy talking, debating, going back and forth. And at the end of it, we shook hands, we talked. And, we, th and we, we talked about going out for bowling or something another night. That's a respect-based relationship. And I feel like so many people are tiptoeing out. Ow, don't, don't do that. Okay, pretend I'm tiptoeing. They're, they're, they're tiptoeing based on fear that their relationships with their loved ones, with the people that they care about, are going to end. And my question to you is, what scares you more? The idea of a bad relationship ending right now, or the idea of pretending that this is a good relationship for 10 to 20 years into the future. And I'm not saying go into it all guns blazing, I'm not saying bring things up for the hell of it in the middle of a conversation about something completely different, but if it does happen to come up, if there's any issue that matters to you, and you feel that you cannot bring it up, I want you to go down, dig deep down inside for your courage, and just say what you think, and say it in a respectful, kind and dignified manner and be open to any criticism that somebody else has to say. And, and, and don't, you know, don't raise your voice, don't raise your, don't get a temper, don't start yelling and blah, blah, blah. Don't become personally offended. Listen to what the other person has to say. And if they say, and if they start screaming at you and they start insulting you and they start, and, and they never want to talk to you again, guess what? You just, fig you just lost one crappy relationship. As Ed Norton says in 25th Hour, champagne to my real friends and real pain to my sham friends. Figure out who the sham friends are early in life. It's gonna help you out. Same thing in relationships with me. There are a lot of guys out there that are like, I don't want her speaking to her ex-boyfriend. I don't want her doing, you know, texting this person. Or there are insecure women as well that don't want to try to seem sexist here that'll say things like, I, I, I don't want him looking through Instagram and seeing his ex's picture. She needs to remove that. I never do that. I never do that. I don't care. If I'm dating somebody and they decide to go over the house of their ex-boyfriend and there's nobody else, I don't care. You know why? I want to figure out as early as I can in the relationship if I can trust them. If I have to keep the person that I'm dating away from everybody else because I'm afraid that, that I can't trust, then guess what? What's, okay, great. So you manage to keep the other person from cheating by keeping other influences away for two or three years and then you get married and guess what? You're not there one day, you go on vacation and they, and they cheat. I'd rather figure out in the beginning. I want to know in week one of the relationship if it's not going to work. And it's the, and it's the same thing in romantic relationships as it is in, um, in friendly relationships and familiar relationships. If you're afraid that you cannot have a real discussion because of what's going to erupt, that's just as bad as if you're afraid that you need to watch the person that you're with all the time because if you don't watch them and you don't know where they are all the time, you don't control them, then they're going to cheat. Fear-based relationships never work. <clears throat> and even more ridiculous is this idea where people are actually encouraging people 
to only talk to people who hold the same viewpoints. I, I read this one article, particularly about Wisconsin somewhere, where they're like, oh, well, it's, uh, it's so hard talking to other people because you never know if, they, if their political views are the same as yours, and it's just, who, who cares? Who cares? Talk to other people. If somebody doesn't agree with you, great. That's great. You might actually learn something. If you keep the lizard brain thing off, you might actually learn something. You might actually find out that you have common ground on something. We're not all evil people. It's not like most of us don't want the world to be a better place, that we don't want the best for ourselves and the people around us. There are these common virtues that are going to unite you. And that is something that you could build a respect worthy friendship on. You, you're, you're not supposed to build your friendship solely on, you have the exact same viewpoint on, uh, that I do on one, two, three, four, five, because that, that's how you live a very, very boring life. That's staying in an echo chamber. How much throughout history has been accomplished that's good by everybody staying in the same echo chamber? It doesn't work. My dad is a smart guy. Very smart guy. He's actually gonna start a talk show soon and I'm gonna link to it. I've been, he wants to write a, a third book, but I keep trying to convince him to do a talk show instead because, I mean, book sales versus talk show, yeah, a lot more people will listen to it. We disagree on almost everything, every day. And we still call and we still talk to each other. And I, I, got, I gotta visit him, it's been a while. But that's the basis of a respectful relationship. I have to thank my dad for this in, in some way for giving me this mentality. I remember when I was younger, he never believed in hitting or standard punishment or you can't go outside, I'm taking away your bike, you can't watch The Simpsons, I'm gonna smack you or any of that. It was always this rational debate, argument-based discipline. If I did something awful or terrible or wrong or I did something that was just morally reprehensible, he would say, go to the thinking chair. He never called it go to your room. He had an actual room in the house that he used as his library for all of his research. He had a lot of hobbies and just things that he liked to research on his spare time. So he had a room dedicated to this with all his books called the library. And he had this chair in the room that was called the library. And he called it the thinking chair. And he would say, Lewis, go to the thinking chair. And then he would give me five or 10 minutes. He would come in after about the five or 10 minutes was over. And then he would talk to me and he'd say, why do you think I asked you to walk here? Um, okay. And then he would explain his point of view on something. And then I would respond. And then after, he wouldn't allow me to respond with insults. He wouldn't allow me to respond with, with yelling. I couldn't leave the room if I responded with yelling or insults or crap and ad hominem shit. I could only respond with, with, with a rational argument. And then he would respond with experience from his life with a rational argument that was usually better than mine because I was six or eight years old and he was a grown up. And we would go back and forth. I was never afraid of losing my bicycle. I was never afraid of not being able to go outside. I was never afraid of not being able to watch The Simpsons. I was never afraid of getting spanked. But rather, I was able to have this rational discourse based on a respectful relationship. And I'm, I'm very happy that that was one of the first relationships I had in life because it set the tone for every relationship I've had since then. And it taught me to seek respect-based relationships and avoid fear-based relationships. I'm really glad that he taught me that method of discourse because when I go back over the past 10 years, when I compare and contrast 18 to 28, and I look at where I was then and I look at where I am now, and I look at how I thought then and I look at how I thought now, there were these people that I really disagreed with. I didn't just disagree with them on what they were saying to me, but I also did not want to lead the life that they lived. We were friends, but I just, we disagreed on so many different things. And 99% of what they said, I would never think twice about, but there'd be this one little nugget of wisdom, this one small nugget of wisdom that I would get to hear because I didn't start insulting them the second that they disagreed with me or vice versa, there's this one small nugget of wisdom, and I would look back over the past three years, and i go, huh, well, I had this problem, and that problem, and this huge problem, and none of these would have actually occurred if I took into account that nugget of wisdom. I'm gonna use that for the future. And then I look at where I am now, and I look at all the things that I have, I look at all the luxuries I have, I look at all the, the, the blessings that I've gotten in life, and I wouldn't have so many of those if it wasn't for these small nuggets of wisdom that came from people who I fundamentally disagreed with, that if I were raised differently, I would have been this close to, to pushing away with a fearful and hateful attitude. Don't allow yourself to get stuck in an echo chamber. Don't listen to these bullshit articles that are explaining to you how to avoid people that think differently from you. Nothing in history has come out of an echo chamber 
that's any good. You need to listen to the ideas of other people. I know that a lot of the ideas that I have may not be the solution. I may disagree with what your idea for the solution is, but if you take your idea and my idea, hey, and when we take what you disagree with and what I disagree with, or was it I? If we take what we both disagree with, we might just finally come to an idea that makes sense for both of us. And that'll be what makes sense for everyone. But we, you're never gonna get to that if you stay here and I stay here and you only talk to the people that are around you and I only talk to the people that are around me. Nothing comes of that. Just lizard braid fighting and nonsense and miserable, hate-filled relationships. Avoid that. None of your relationships should be based on fear. And if they are, now is a great time to think about cutting them out of your life. Ow. Uh, my relationship with my right leg is very much based on fear, but I don't want to cut it out of my life just yet.